This video is going to be an in-depth and updated review of Elementor and Elementor Pro. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button and joining 51,000 other people just like you learning about WordPress. And if you want video notifications, there'll be a little bell off to the right of that subscribe button. Click on that. YouTube will let you know when I upload a new video. Now, before I get started, this is going to be a little bit longer of a video. It's going to be in depth. I'll try to break it up into sections that you can go into the video description box, click on it, and just jump to those particular parts. I'll give you a quick overview here in a moment, but I did want to make mention that I'm going to talk about different things, and there'll be links in the video description down below, but I wanted to point out on my website, there's a link right here. It's probably right above my head. It says Transparency Report, and what that is will explain the entire review process that I go through when I make reviews like this. So if you had any questions about does a uh, plugin developer give me a copy of a plugin? The answer is very most of the time no. Uh, it's all answered right there so you can go and you can see no one's reviewed this material before I've uploaded it. No one has any influence on it. These are my opinions and my experiences of using Elementor and Elementor Pro for the last year and a half. And what has brought about this updated review video is the release of Elementor version two and Elementor Pro version two. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. All right, so I am back. And first, I want to start with an overview of the video. Now, I'm going to let you know that I'm going to try to go through everything a little on the faster side to get through everything and to make sure this video isn't longer than it needs to be. However, if you are watching this on YouTube, there's the ability to increase your playback speed. So I'd encourage you to consider that if you want to get through the video faster. So this video, first, I'm going to talk about what is Elementor. Then we're going to talk about the core features of Elementor. Then we're going to move on to the core features of Elementor Pro. Then we're going to talk about some of the things to consider. This would be maybe uh, some might refer to this as cons. You know, we talk about the pros, we talk about the cons. This is the section where we would talk about some of the cons or the perceptions that are out there having to deal with Elementor. Then we're going to briefly touch on some of the comparisons with other market leading page builders that are available. And then we're going to talk about how you can learn more about Elementor. So first, let's go ahead and talk about what Elementor is. So first, it's good to just back up a little bit and talk about the history of Elementor. Elementor was released mid to late 2016. And since that time, it has experienced explosive growth and not only growth in the amount of people actually using it in the adoption of Elementor, but also the uh, what the plugin can do, what Elementor can do. It has grown leaps and bounds. It's almost astonishing to see how fast it has grown. And currently today, Elementor has over 700,000 active installations. That's a massive number for this short period of time. But what's more impressive is that Elementor is adding about 100,000 active installations per month. So if you're watching this video in two months from now, Elementor will have over a million active installations. That is extremely impressive considering the short period of time that Elementor has even been available. And so that leads you to the next question is what is the big deal about Elementor in the first place? And I have my opinions on that and we're going to hit those when we start talking about everything that Elementor is. So perfect. Let's talk about Elementor's core features. It's important to first just get on the table that Elementor is a front end page builder. This is opposed to a back end page builder. And the big deal about Elementor is that it was the first free, 100% free WordPress front end page editor that was not crippled, meaning you could use this to build a beautiful website without requiring you to purchase anything, which at the time is 
and was and still is a big deal. There are plenty of free page builders, but most of them tend to be back-end page builders, or if they are a front-end page builder, they're crippled in some way, so it's more of a demo of a page builder than an actual product that you could start using to build out your website. So essentially, they really didn't hold much back when Elementor came out, so much so that when they came out with their professional version of it, which extends what it can do, a lot of us were sitting there thinking, what what can they add that would make someone want to actually purchase something because the free version of it is so amazing. So let's get back to the front end page builder aspect. I'm gonna demonstrate that here for you a moment. Uh, But essentially a front end page builder will give you instant feedback as you make changes to your page. It's almost like a WYSI WIGI. That is an old acronym. Some people will remember it. It stands for what you see is what you get, WYSI WIGI. Let me show you the difference between a front end page builder and a back end page builder. Okay, so let's first look at a back end page builder. So here is a back end page builder. So essentially, when you're assembling the page for your website, you don't visually get to see at all what it's going to look like. So whenever you want to add something to it, you then have to click on the update button, then you have to wait a few seconds, and then you have to go to the front end of your website, click on refresh the page just to see that one little change that you made. Now that might not seem like a big deal, but when you're having to do that hundreds of times per page that you are building, it's a huge deal and it is so, it it just takes all the fun and joy out of building anything on a website. And that is your typical back end page builder experience. A good example of that is, so I'm I'm looking at this and you, you don't even know what it looks like in the front end. So here's a button, okay? Now I know when I add a button to my website, I'm gonna wanna play around with the rounded edge. I'm gonna wanna play around with the color, the font, the icon, the drop shadow and all that. So so I just described about 10 or 15 different changes that I'm going to make. And you figure you might change each one to get it just right, maybe five times. So that's about 25 or 30 different changes that you might want to make to the button. So imagine just to get the button just right, you're going to have to click on update, wait a few seconds, then go to the front end of the page where the button appears, click on refresh, and wait and see how you like it, and then have to do that same process just for one thing, one element, 20 to 30 times. That is, let's just say that is not the best way or the most efficient way of doing something. It actually reminds me of, of one of these, okay? This is a flip phone. Many of you might not have even seen a flip phone. You don't, you don't see these things out anymore. Now, a flip phone, I can use this flip phone to uh, call people. It'll get the job done. I can use this to text people. It will get the job done. It just take a little bit more time. Uh, if I want to type a, a letter, I might have to hit a number two or three times to get the right letter and then go to the next letter. That is exactly what using a back-end page builder is like. We don't use flip phones today for a reason. We use iPhones. Let's get my display on. We use iPhones. This is an iPhone X, by the way. I love it. Um, you don't even have to type anymore. You can just use your voice. Voice. There's a reason that why we don't use flip phones anymore. It is old technology. There's a better, faster, more efficient, and more fun to use ways of doing things. That's the best analogy between a back end page builder and what we get with Elementor, which is a front end page builder. So when I click on edit with Elementor, it's going to take me instantly into the Elementor editor, and it's what you see is what you get. So here's a bit of text. If I want to change this, I can just click right here and start typing away and I've changed it and I can see and get that immediate feedback whether or not I like how this looks. Remember I was giving you an example of buttons? Well, I can click on the button and I can start changing everything. I can change the alignment of the button. I'll have it left aligned. I can change the fonts. I can change what it says all instantaneously. And that is a huge, huge departure from what we used to have in a back end page build like this, which yes, you can still get the job done in a backend page builder. I'm not knocking this product or this page builder. I'm just saying it's 
really not the best way to do things today when you factor in the tools we have available to us. But there's always going to be people that want to still use their flip phone and there's always going to be people that still want to use their back end page builder. But that is why Elementor is really something special because it is a full featured, the most full featured front end page builder. Okay. Uh, the page builder has 23 modules. These are little building blocks that you can put in your page to build it out. It also includes templates, full page templates, and it also has something called blocks. This is really cool. These are pre-designed sections that you might want to use on a page. It's very neat. I have a couple of videos out on that. Uh, Elementor is extremely mobile friendly, meaning when you're in the editor, you can put it in mobile view and start making specific changes. So maybe a font looks looks great at the size you have it at on a desktop, but it's a little too big for a mobile device. Well, you can put it in, you can change that font just for mobile devices specifically. That's what I'm talking about, mobile friendly. Now there's actually a lot more aspects to that, which it's very, very powerful. In fact, it's my favorite mobile editor in a page builder that I've ever used and I've used every page builder there is. Next, it works with any WordPress theme. However, there are some recommended themes. So typically when we're talking about a, a page builder working with your theme, we want the width of what you're able to lay into your page to be from edge to edge. It's called a full width. Now, if you're using a recommended theme, it's it's going to have that as an option. If you using maybe an older theme, it's probably not going to have that option. Or if you're using a theme that doesn't have specific Elementor integration, you can still use Elementor uh, and there's some tricks to get that full width, but it's there's not like this direct integration, even though it will work with those themes. Uh, the second thing that you typically want to remove when you're using a page builder is the page title and any kind of like spacing or padding around a particular page that you're on. So a perfect example, let me get back to this page. So this page you can see right here, it's edge to edge. There's no page title or anything like that. So that is what I'm talking about when you want to use a theme that works with Elementor. Now it'll work with any theme. Now the recommended themes for Elementor, there are four of them. And these are genuinely or generally widely regarded as the best themes to use with Elementor or maybe any page builder. And those four themes are the Astra theme. This happens to be the theme that I use on my websites. GP, that stands for Generate Press. I'll have links to everything down below, of course. OWP stands for Ocean WP. PBF, that's probably not the correct acronym, but that stands for the Page Builder Framework Theme. I'll have to put a link down below as well. Now, all four of these themes have a free version that you can use, and all four of these themes have a professional extension that you can purchase and add to it to extend what the theme is able to do. So these are the recommended themes to use with Elementor, and it's a general consensus on it. There's some differences between them people are going to have their preferences that's okay i have my preference and someone else will have a different preference i can say that they're all good themes all right so now let's get into elementor pro's core features now with elementor pro you're going to get 30 additional modules so i think i said 23 there's 23 currently in the just elementor elementor pro is going to add 30 additional modules now some of these are modules that normally you would have to purchase another plugin in order to get those features. A perfect example of that is the forms module. This thing is amazing. You can make beautiful forms, opt-in forms with this forms module. A couple other favorite modules of mine are the pricing tables. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, the grid module, that's if you want to 
have a grid of blog posts that you might have created. I use that a lot. These are just some of my favorites right here, but they're all really good. Another feature that's pretty big with Elementor Pro, and this just came out with version two of Elementor Pro, you can use the page builder, Elementor Pro, to build headers and footers for your website. So those are typically traditionally areas that you would have to depend on your theme in order to create those and style those and make those how you want. And it would always be a little on the rigid side. Let's just be frank. So a theme would have to have lots of different header styles and invariably it's not going to be perfect now with Elementor Pro. And if you use it with one of those recommended themes, I think right now there's only five themes that sp support this specific feature, you can use Elementor Pro to make headers and footers for it. So you, this essentially unlocks some amazing creative things that you're going to be able to do with your website. The best aspect about it, though, is that you don't have to learn some separate tool or interface or whatever to build those headers and footers like I've seen some other themes do and I think has been kind of a um, the wrong path for them to go on. Uh, next, you're going to get pro templates. So there's additional templates that use these 30 Pro modules. So there, there's going to be templates that use some of those modules. You get access to those and you also get blocks that are for pro the Pro version only that are going to use some of those 30 different modules that come with Elementor Pro. There are some deep WooCommerce features. Some are on the way. Uh, some of them are here. So what's going to be coming up very soon is you're going to be able to use Elementor to kind of create a layout for WooCommerce product pages, and then you're going to be able to apply them across the board onto all of your products. That's going to be powerful. That is coming out very, very soon. There's also developer features in Elementor Pro, and this might be a concept that might, uh, for some people, it might take a moment to wrap your head around. I'm going to have separate tutorials on it. Actually, I'll have separate tutorial on all these bullet items, but for developer features, you're allowed to create with Elementor Pro version 2 post templates. So what a post template is, is when you have your WordPress site and you create a blog post and you take a look at that blog post, you the way it looks is dependent upon how the theme made it look. So instead, you're going to be able to kind of create a template in Elementor and tell Elementor, Elementor that you want that template to apply to what all of your blog posts or just certain blog posts in certain categories or even just specific posts. What that means is your blog posts, if you have blog posts, you're going to always be able to make them look relevant and updated. If you want to move something, you could go in there and change it in the template one location and it's going to change in all of them. It might be a little more of an advanced of a concept to wrap your mind around, but that is a feature that's in Elementor Pro. You can also create something called archive pages. You can create these post templates for custom post types. You can use custom fields. There is also going to be integration with advanced custom fields. Well, that's already there for the most part. Tool set and hopefully pods. Now, another nice thing about Elementor Pro in Elementor itself is they have in-depth developer documentation. And what that means is say if you are running an agency and there is some kind of feature you want in Elementor that isn't there, well, you can build the Elementor module and all the documents are there and you can use those on your client's websites. And there's some other uh, uh, features as well. Uh, there's a role manager where you can restrict what your clients can have access to do when they're looking at an Elementor page. Okay, a couple other odds and ends and there's probably a couple things I'm going to miss here too but there's just lots of little things it does you get global elements this is something that I use a lot so that means I can create uh, a, a module and have it look exactly how I want it to look I can save it and I can use it on multiple pages but if I want to change how it looks later on I don't have to go to each page and change it I can change it in one spot and it will carry across my whole website I'm sure a lot of you guys understand 
understand that. It's probably best demonstrated. And there's another little feature. I, I think I'm actually just listing out my favorite features here. I like this a lot. It has this CSS input box, so you can make little tweaks just to that particular module. I like that a lot. You could still work around this if you only have just Elementor. There's ways of working around it. I love the CSS input box myself. So let me just do a quick jump into Elementor right now, show you some of these modules, and just take a quick look at some of these things. Some of you might have already seen it. Okay, so here I am. Over here on the left is the main interface for Elementor when you're in a page, and it's gonna list out all of those modules or elements or widgets. Uh, the, the terminology all kind of crosses over. So here's some of the ones in Elementor. Here are the pro elements, and they're specifically listed as the pro elements. I didn't talk about portfolio portfolio slides, I talked about form, nav menu, animated headline is actually very cool. I use that, that's one of the ones I like. I really like this flip box, I use that. Price list is great for a lot of different applications, countdown timers, uh, block quotes, some Facebook related stuff. And then here's the theme elements, this is another feature in the Pro when you're using it for those custom post layouts that I was talking about. Here's some general elements here, it's everything that you could want you're getting progress bars, accordions, toggle switches, all of those various items. And so there are those. Let me show you that CSS input box. I love this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag, actually here, instead of adding something and ruining this layout, let me just go ahead and click on this button. So I have this little advanced tab. I click on that, I scroll down. It says right here, custom CSS. There's my custom CSS input box. I really love that. Also one thing I should have mentioned early on is you have inline text editing. And essentially what that means is I can click on any bit of text and start changing it. Even this button right here where it says read more, I can click on that and I can start changing the text. So it's a lot more intuitive, which means there's gonna be less of a learning curve so just remember that whole analogy of using a flip phone to make phone calls and to text message people you don't have that kind of a problem using Elementor it's not only easier to use more intuitive to use you're gonna actually enjoy it let me show you those templates and that that concept of blocks real quick so right here I'm gonna click on this plus I'll click on add template it's gonna give me this pop-up and here are all of the page templates now some that say pro there's a little badge that says pro on the top right that just means it's only available for people that have Elementor Pro and there's a wide deep range of templates here that you can use for inspiration now there's a tab right here that says blocks and these are those blocks that I talked about now when you scroll up to the top they're categorized you can just say I wanted a block for frequently asked questions so I'm gonna click on FAQ and here's a couple variations of that I can click one button and immediately insert this into the template. Essentially what this is gonna allow you to do is build your pages faster and also have the inspiration of how you might want it to look. You can really build some things really fast. Another thing that comes with normal Elementor is you can save your templates, you can export them, it's portable, you can take it to other websites if you wanted to do that. And I've actually done that on my channel. I've made several templates available to people for free, of course. All right, so that is the core Elementor Pro features. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the things to consider. And these are some of the arguments, okay. Page builders create more code than hand coding. So essentially what this means is, and this is actually just any page builder, it's not Elementor, and Elementor is not really creating any more than some of the other page builders. So what happens is, traditionally, and this is one of the barriers to having a website in the first place. You'd have to hand code everything and it would be very precise. And so a page that's hand coded will naturally be smaller, more efficient. Not efficient like it's going to be like drastically better. But if you wanted to make the argument, is it better or is it not better? Yes, it is better. But is it better uh, in all regards? No, it's not because the other 99.9% .9 of human beings on this earth can't hand code, have no interest in hand coding. So we're gonna want a tool like Elementor where we are looking at it in the front end and we're able to make whatever we can envision. So yes, page builders are gonna create more code if you're inspecting the code. It's gonna be a little bit bigger. In the real world though, there's gonna be not that much impact. 
Okay, next argument. Most content intact when disabling element, or who wrote this? I guess I wrote this. Uh, this is actually something that people are always question. What happens when you stop using XYZ page builder? And this is a great question. All right. So Elementor, when you disable it, most of your content is still intact. So your text is going to be intact, some of your images and all that. Let me give you an example. All right. So I'm going to exit out of here. Let's do that. And then I'm going to go to plugins and I'm going to say, I'm going to check on Elementor and Elementor Pro and I'm going to click on deactivate. I'm going to deactivate it. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay. View site. Oops. Let me go to the home page. There it is. So you can see it retained my text just like it is and my images just like that. So you still have something to work with. Okay. And the contrary, let's take a look at this page builder. Now this is that backend page builder, but it's tied to a theme. So you've got this lock, lock in thing going on here. Uh, all right. So here it is. And okay, there it is. Now it's working. Okay. So let's just see what happens when I disable this page builder here. I don't know if it's actually in plugins. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're looking for fusion builder. So I'm going to click on deactivate. Okay, it's deactivating. And then I'm going to go right here. I'm going to click on refresh and let's just see what we're left with. Okay. Um, all right. So we have this intact, but that's because this was actually in this website not built with the page builder. This is what we're left with. A bunch of short codes and uh, we have a headline here. That's good, but we have a lot of gibberish that we need to work through. I don't see actually any of the images. Now this image on the top, like I said, was made with some kind of a slider, but everything else is pretty much unusable, uh, but there is some bits of text. So you can decide whether this, what you see here is more usable to work with than this. Okay. I'll leave that decision up to you. I did want to bring that up because that's a question that does come up. What happens when you disable the page builder? Elementor is one of the very best in that regard. So you still have stuff to work with there. Okay. Elementor is GPL. Elementor Pro is part GPL. So this is a little bit of a technical discussion on what GPL is. I don't want to get too much into it in this video. I do have a video coming out about the GPL and if it's even relevant today. I just wanted to throw in there that Elementor is GPL and Elementor Pro, the PHP of it is not. Some people might not like that. However, I don't personally think it's that big of a deal at all. I'm just bringing it up in this video in case it comes up. Okay, now let's talk about plugin stability. So Elementor they're aggressive. They are working their tail off night and day to make Elementor the most dominant full featured page building tool out there. And if you look at their history, you can, and, and how the development's gone, they are super aggressive. Now, when Elementor Force came out, the team behind it, they were kind of new to building a plugin that is being used on hundreds of thousands of sites in different hosting environments with other plugins and all of that. So it all makes it a little bit complicated. So the first year that Elementor was out, there were times when Elementor would push out an update and it would cause a problem for people's websites. So they had implemented about a year ago, two measures to combat that. Number one, they have version management. And what that means is if you applied an update to Elementor, an update comes out, you do it, there's a problem. You can easily go back in a couple mouse clicks. So you can revert back to the old version of Elementor and be totally fine. Also with that is they now make betas available. So what that means is you can test a beta version of uh, Elementor that will be coming out in the future to make sure it works fine on your website. In fact, I made a video about a week or two ago about creating a staging version of your website. So for the exact purpose of testing plugins like Elementor on your website. So I can say in my own personal experience that Elementor has been doing a really good job 
in my experience with releasing updates that are perfectly stable. Now, of course, when there's a major version update from version one to version two, there might be a couple bumps along the road. However, I've updated to Elementor version two. I have not had any problems. Now, some of the maybe info out there about Elementor and plugin stability is actually not fair because for example, when Elementor 2 came out, there were some people that had some issues and they were all traced back to a third party plugin that was extending Elementor's features that people that had that third party plugin installed, not endorsed or suggested or recommended by Elementor, that was causing all of these problems. So Elementor of course had to go in there and figure it out. So it's not all Elementor's fault. And then there's some in the WordPress ecosystem that are using page builders that might criticize Elementor and stability of updates and all that, but it, because they're comparing it to maybe a tool that they're using, but it's really an apples to oranges comparison. For me, I like Elementor. I like what they're doing and I'm willing to, I want to be along for the ride because they're giving me exactly what I want versus some other product that really isn't improving, evolving and changing. It's just kind of stuck where it is kind of going at a snail's pace. So, you know, some people are going to compare apples to oranges that's okay they can do that if they want to but it's important to look at all of the facts with it i can say for me elementor has been very stable with their updates they've changed it around in the last 12 months so i did want to talk about those things uh, because they might come up okay so let's go ahead and jump into some quick comparisons now these are going to be comparisons with other page building products okay this is where in the video, people are going to start clicking on that thumbs down because people love the tool that they're using and that's okay. If you are enjoying the content in this video, I'm going to ask you right now to click on the thumbs up because there's definitely going to be people right now that are going to disagree with me, but that's okay. We can disagree. We can talk about it in the comment section, uh, but I'm going to share my experiences right now. So first, we're, this is actually um, in an order. It's in alphabetical order, okay? So I'm not picking on one over the other. So we're going to first talk about Beaver Builder. Beaver Builder, okay, so this is going to be a quick comparison, not in depth, okay? Just a quick comparison. Elementor is a better value than Beaver Builder uh, in, in every regard. Beaver Builder is solid. It's a very well built, built page builder. They made some updates last December and they made it even better. I'm, I love Beaver Builder. And for, in fact, I have Beaver Builder on my website along with Elementor. Yes, you can use two page builders on your website. That's a topic for another video. However, uh, Elementor is a much better value and it could be an even greater value. So here's the main thing that I find. Elementor has more modules that I actually want to use than Beaver Builder by itself has, okay? Next, uh, Beaver Builder, if you want to use Elementor for some of the developer features I talked about using it to build a header and a footer, I talked about creating custom post types and all of that. With Elementor, it's, it's all included in Elementor Pro. With Beaver Builder, you don't get those features if they're important to you. They do sell an additional plugin for $147 that will get those features for you. However, so now you've got two purchases, right? Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer. And then those modules, if you want some more useful modules, then you got to tack on an add-on package for Beaver Builder. And that's usually about another $60 or $70 right there. So you get a better value out of Elementor Pro. And I find that the modules are more useful to me. Now that is 100% subjective, my experience. Not Might not be your experience watching it, that is my experience. I'm sharing my experience, okay? So if people want to say you're biased, yeah, that is a bias based upon my experience using both, okay? That's Beaver Builder really quick. Divi, okay. now. If, if I would have compared this to Divi a year ago, Elementor would crush Divi. Yes, sorry Divi folks. However, if anyone has followed Divi over the last 12 months, you gotta just say, holy cow, Divi has released feature update after feature update after feature update. And it's almost like 
I'm, I'm not saying they're doing this, but it's almost like they're watching Elementor, seeing what they're doing, and then trying to one-up them. Maybe coming out with the same feature, but making it a little deeper. And I've actually noticed that, that with the if there's a feature that both have, it's just a little deeper in what you can do with Divi. I'm talking about design features here. So they're very comparable. Now, the pro version of Elementor and some of those features I was talking about, creating a header and a footer, creating custom post templates, those types of things, you're not getting those with Divi at the time of making this. Now I did hear a year, and Divi's a little slow to do things, let's just get that out there. Um, a year ago, the folks at Divi said they are going to build a header and footer builder, so you could use Divi to make headers and footers. Here we are a year later, there's no sign of it. So I'm sure it's it's in the cards for them, it's just not out yet, and I'm sure maybe that's something that they'll release later this year. So surprisingly, Elementor and Divi, they're very comparable. Some people don't like um, Divi because when you deactivate, it, deactivate Divi, it's going to look much like that website I showed you where there's all this code gibberish and all that. So if that matters to you it's important to note that that's out there now one of the things that people like about Divi is you can purchase a lifetime license you could do that today who knows if that's going to be available tomorrow it's been that way forever uh, but they do have an unlimited site license and a lot of people happen to like that so that's just a quick comparison to Divi all right, next is comparing it to Thrive Architect. It's kind of hard to compare it to Thrive Architect. Elementor is a lot more well-rounded. I've used this kind of example. I would build a full website with Elementor. I wouldn't build a full website with Thrive Architect. Thrive Architect today has more of a marketing-centric feature set. That being said, there are some things you could do with Thrive Architect that you can't do with Elementor. However, for me, it's not enough to choose Thrive Architect over Elementor for my own personal use. That being said, if my website is primarily marketing something, there's more useful marketing elements available in Thrive Architect. And I've written out some of those in my Thrive Architect review and also my Thrive Architect comparison to Elementor which is the written version on my website. So, so far, do you think I'm being fair to Beaver Builder, Divi, Thrive Architect? I think I am. I'm basing this all on my personal experience, okay? I think I'm being very fair to all of them. I think they're all good. But what happens about all those other page builders that I didn't didn't bring up just now? And I like to call those the XYZ page builder. So I wanna give you four questions to ask of any page builder to decide if it's something that you wanna use or not. The first question, kind of obvious. Is anyone else using it? Let me preface these questions though. They're not meant to go individually, they're meant to go together, okay? Basically, if you're only asking if anyone else is using it, that's a deceptive question, okay? And now, if you were to take it, and it's kind of like uh, a TV show here in the United States called Shark Tank. The first thing they ask you when you go in the tank on Shark Tank is how much money has your has your business made? And they'll say a million dollars. They say, wow. And you know what the next question is? Over how many years? So this isn't the best question, but it's a starter question. So we could look at maybe Site Origin Page Builder. There's over a million people using that thing. How long has it been around? A whole heck of a long time. If you kind of break that up, and break that down it's not as impressive as it could be okay so you want to ask if anyone's using it and this is more to identify and eliminate out those page builders that no one uses now you might say well so what if no one uses I, I, I'm not one of those herd mentality people and you know what I'm not one of those herd mentality people either but I want to use something that's going to be in business in a year or in two years I want to use something that's going to continue to grow and get better I want to use something that is a backed by a company that actually makes money. Why? Because choosing, it's like your, your page builder is like the foundation of your website. Well, your theme, but you can easily change themes. Your page builder really is, and you can't just easily change your page builder. It's a big pain in the rear end, so you want to make the right choice up front. And also, there's been a lot of transition with page builders lately, ones that are just sh closing up shop. Uh, so first question, is anyone using it? Next question, is it front end or back end? I think I demonstrated that pretty well. Just ask yourself, do you prefer a flip phone? It's okay if you do. 
It's okay if you prefer typing on the keypad, you know, hitting number two, three times to get the letter C, and then, you know, it's okay. Uh, but you want to ask, is it a front-end or a back-end page builder? I personally think there's no comparison to the two. Okay, next question. Are you locked in? And you got to decide if that's a big deal or not to you. I showed you locked in is kind of when you disable it, all your stuff doesn't look too good. It's not really that usable. It's not easy to copy and paste. For some people, this is a big deal. For some people, it's not a big deal. So you want to ask that question. You want to see what happens. And the most important question is, does it have what you need. The problem with that question though, sometimes we don't know what we need. We don't know what we want until we, 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 it's like that phrase, you don't know what you don't know. So you've got to do your best to figure out what you need because only you can answer, does that particular tool have what you need? So I'm not here saying use this over that, use that over this. I'm not, I'm trying my hardest not to say that. I'm sharing my personal experiences here, but go and test out the tool and then ask these questions against it and see how it fares. Lastly, I want to share some resources for learning more about Word, uh, not Word, well, WordPress, <laughs> learning more about Elementor. Uh, you can watch my YouTube channel. I have so many videos about Elementor and I'm regularly releasing new tutorials about Elementor. They're freely available here on the channel. You can hit the subscribe button. There's no cost and there's a bell off to it and you're going to find some useful uh, useful videos about Elementor. There's also a Facebook community for Elementor and for WP Crafter here. Just go, I'll put links in the video description box or you can just go to Facebook and do a search for Elementor and WP Crafter. These are great communities of people that are learning the same tools as you and are in the same exact spot as you. If you want to learn Elementor a little faster, I have a paid training course, but I have a way that you can get this for free if it interests you. It's called Elementor Essentials. Last I counted, it has over 40 video tutorials in there, lessons that all go together. So the first part of the course is actually not Elementor related at all. It, I teach you how the core fundamentals of building out a beautiful website for yourself and getting all your ducks in a row. And then we dive deep into Elementor. Uh, actually, I'm in the process of updating this course because Elementor 2 just came out and I'm going to expand it with some of these new features that just came out today in Elementor. Elementor Pro version 2. Now here's the best thing. You can buy it, but if you don't have Elementor and you're considering purchasing Elementor, I'll have a link in the video description box and you take it, you click on the link, it'll go to my website and on my website, it'll tell you basically I'll give you access to this course to help you get the most out of Elementor when you purchase Elementor through my website, the link on my website. Essentially they have a referral program. That's not at all a deciding factor in me having made this video or me having made this course or any of these videos. I made that course in order to help people that want to build a website with Elementor get better results faster. And so you can get access to the course for free. Uh, if you don't want to do that, that's okay. Uh, the course is available for sale for $199. So that is everything I have for you in this video. You might be thinking, uh, but you didn't show me Elementor. Well, I have a whole series of videos that are going to hit the channel over the course of the next few days about Elementor version two, which just came out. There's going to be a series of tutorials that's going to show you how to use a lot of these new New pro features that came out and a lot of the features that came out in Elementor version 2. Uh, so just consider clicking on the subscribe button and uh, you'll be able to get access to those. If you leave a comment, I respond to as many as I can. If you found any value in this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Hey, I want to thank you for taking your time to watch this video. I hope you found some value in it and the information could help guide you in the decision that you want to go as far as what page builder you want to use for your website. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around in the next video.